Hello and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be looking at ways you can monetize your Chrome extensions. Now it's going to be broken into three sections. So firstly, we're going to be looking at changes being made to the Chrome Web Store by Google. Second, we're going to look at how you can integrate Stripe inside your Chrome extension so you can actually take payments within your own extension. And then thirdly, we're going to look at a couple of ways that you can protect your code. So quickly first, we're going to look at the changes that have actually been made. So these started back in March and they were temporary to begin with where they stopped allowing any new paid extensions into the Chrome Web Store. In September, they decided to make these changes permanent. And that means that from the 1st of December, if you have a paid extension on the Web Store already, you can no longer have free trials. From the 1st of February next year, you will no longer be able to charge for apps that have already been accepted. So there's a few important things that that means for people that either want to launch a new paid extension or people that do have already. So if you have an extension on the App Store already that's paid, one thing that you need to look at is the way that this is actually licensed because they haven't announced it yet, but Google are also going to be removing the licensing API from the Chrome Store payment side of things as well. So this is quite important because this is how you can actually find out who has paid for your extension and who hasn't. Okay, so if you're thinking about launching a paid extension in the near future, whether this is a, a one-off extension or a monthly subscription, then because the, Google has removed the option to charge for your extensions natively in the Chrome Web Store now, you need to think about this right when you're planning out your extension. So it should be a key part of how your users are authorized and how people can actually set up and use your extension. Now, because the licensing API is no use for you, um, you can't use this now to, to check if people have paid for your extension because this won't be, it's only existing extensions that can use this. So when you're setting up your user accounts, you also need to think about, has this user paid? What plan are they on? And things like this. So the example I'm gonna show you now is just how you can in integrate with Stripe. This is just one way you can take payments. There's a lot of other methods that you can do around this as well. Now, most of this can be done within your extension code, but there's some parts that you need to integrate with the back end. So you will need to use some sort of other API or system that you can send your um, API information and request token that converts the card information into. So that's what we're gonna focus on now. Okay, so if you want to be able to add um, Stripe into your extension itself so you can start to take payments, one of the things we need to do first is make sure that we can make calls to Stripe's SDK and back from within our extension. Um, so as you can see here, I have a content security policy in my manifest that references stripe.com, js.stripe.com and uh, js.stripe.com forward slash v3. And this is the different domains and resources that Stripe's um, JavaScript makes calls to. So it needs to be able to access these different scripts from within, from within your extension. Now, depending on where exactly you want to integrate um, your sort of Stripe payment form, this could be inside a content script or within a pop-up extension, for example, you may need to make extra um, security checks in here to be able to actually Im include this into your extension. So as you can see here, I'm, I want to include this as an iframe inside a content script. So it has a little bit of extra security and it isn't possible to add this directly inside a content script. So you need that extra step to put it inside an iframe. So once you've got it inside an iframe, as you can see here, you have to put it inside the web accessible resources um, object just here and put it inside an array um, inside your manifest file. So once you've got that set up, I'll show you what the Stripe frame.html um, file looks like. So all this does is it's just a separate HTML page. We uh, include our Stripe JavaScript up here, add a little bit of styling so that the element appears how we want it to. And then we just add the card element just here and then add JavaScript file. Now what this JavaScript file will do is set up and mount the card element so we can accept payments. So I'll jump over to the file just here. So what this does is it uses our Stripe API keys, so our test and our live key. It checks if we want to be in live mode or sandbox mode. This is what this um, variable's for up here, which is probably the best way to do this. So we initialize the Stripe um, library. We then set up Stripe elements um, after he's connected to our key just here. Um, and then we pass through a little bit more custom styling. So some of it you can use with CSS in the stripe frame.html, but some of it you do still have to style um, through the style element just here. Then we create our card element. Now this bit here is how we can interact with our content script if that's what you're using. 
if you're using a pop-out extension, you can add this code in directly into that page without having to add this extra step. But if it's a content script, we need to communicate through the send message part of the Chrome runtime. So what we need to do first, because this is in a separate iframe, is find out what is the current tab. So you do this by calling Chrome tabs query, get the current window that's active, and that will send back a response just here. So we've got this tabs um, callback, and we wanna get the first tab, so the active tab, and then put this as a variable just here. So this is our active tab. And then you can send a message by just calling Chrome tabs send message then here we pass in the active tab ID. So it makes sure this message gets sent to the right place. So where our content script will be listening. I'll show you that example in a moment. So then we just send through our commands. This is Stripe card on change. And then we've made sure we sent this all through. So this is inside of our Stripe um, change event. So if someone starts typing in their card number and there might be an error or something in here, we make sure that we pass this information through to our um, actual content script just here. Now at the same time, we can also check for errors. So this will tell us if the card's correct or if it's wrong, and that'll all get passed through as a change event just here. But what we need to be able to do as well is make sure that this same Stripe frame.javascript is listening to see if we want to submit this card. So if the person has entered their card details and everything's correct, they can press a button on the content script that's like a normal event listener that can send a message through to our um, essentially background page, but just for Stripe, that can then submit the card. So as you can see, we have this set up here. So when we receive messages to our um, Stripe frame area, we can call this command just here. So if it's submit Stripe card, we're gonna call this function, which if we just search for it, you can see up here, handles the submission with Stripe. So all it does is it calls Stripe. We wanna create a token with this card element so that iframe has found that the user's typed in their information and it's ready to use. So if it's an error, we send another message back using active ID again. So this is why we call, we have this at the very, very top here. So this carries up the whole page um, down to here. So we can always find out what the current tab is. Um, so where are we, just here. So if it works, we send the response here, Stripe card confirm, and we send the result. So this is the token that's needed for the backend part, which I'll explain in a moment. So this is where we pass in the token, and if it doesn't work, we send an error. And then we've put all of this inside a try block as well, so we can catch any other areas, errors that Stripe might not have found. So that gets sent again to the on error. So now just to look at what this would be like from our within our content script, you can see up here we just have our, um, we include our iframe on the page. So this is just a basic um, where you could have your content script here. So we just call in our iframe and then use Chrome extension get URL to actually get the full path um, of our Stripe frame HTML file. And then we add that in just here. And then we're just creating a document that we're appending to the page. This would appear at the very, very bottom of the page, which obviously you wouldn't want to do. You'd want to include it inside your actual extension logic um, once the user's created an account or something like this. So that flow, you would need to make sure that you work out first. Um, but that's how you would add the iframe onto your page. And then here you can see down here, so we've got two different um, parts to our code now. On the one hand, we're listening from events, for events from our Stripe frame JavaScript file. So this could be the, the card has changed, um, it's confirmed, it's all worked, or um, there's been an error. So these are different things we need to listen for. Um, if it's confirmed and it's worked, so we've actually, we've typed in our card, we've pressed the submit button and we've got a response saying this has all worked, we can then get our token and our token ID, which we can then send to our backend. So you could set something up on Lambda, for example, that will be listening for any tokens that have been created. And then that's where you would have the secret key part from your Stripe um, set up with your API keys. So you can then complete the payment from the backend. So that's the way it all works within Stripe. You have your, your, um, your private key and your public key so the public key is what's used over here. This is that key at the top here. And then from that, we can initialize with Stripe. So you get a test mode and a live mode. So we'll make sure that you pass that um, to your back end as well. So you know which, um, which mode to use. But once you have those API keys and your token, you can then actually generate the actual payment for this um, within Stripe. So that's what you'll do once it's confirmed. 
And if there's an error, you can obviously show those error messages. And um, we have a little um, element underneath here that just updates um, with the status of this. So say you've got the wrong card information, um, you can make this appear down here. So there's a few different um, types of error message. So as you can see here, and when it's on change, it'll just be this event variable just here. So from the message event, and then you just get error and then message to find out what exact error you had. Um, and if it's a success, it's message.token.id. And it's exactly the same done here. It'll be message.error or event.error.message to find this as well. So that's just a quick example of how you could add that. Then the submit button, as we showed, um, it just grabs the a submit button um, variable we might have. So if we had this over here, uh, if I just add to this, it could be something like button class, submit button. Submit card, so when this um, button with this class named clicked, it will call this area over here, which will then send the command to our, well, it's not really a background page, but our, our Stripe frame with this command just here, which obviously links up with this and it will call this function, which then runs this check here to then call either the confirm error or stripe confirm, which passes in our token just here, which is set up here in result. So the result error or result token, and that's what you can actually use to complete this charge. Now this is quite a load of information here, but as you can see, this is how you have set it up within your extension, and as long as you have your manifest file here set up with this content security policy and your web accessible resources, if you want to run this inside a content script, if you have it in a pop out, it's a lot easier to connect this up. So you don't need that extra step to send these event messages to and from your content script, but you can do it within a content script as well. If you've got any questions on this, just drop a comment. But the only thing you need to do from then onwards, because Chrome is removing the licensing API, this is something you need to think about as well. So how are you going to store which user has paid for your extension? Because remember, they might then load the extension on a different browser that might not have the same ID. So you need to find a way that you can actually link this up. So one of the good things um, with Stripe is you can pass in metadata with this as well. So when you're making this call to your, um, where is it, over here, once you've got your message token ID and you're making a call to your back end, so whether this is with Lambda um, or another sort of backend that you want to use, when you are sending this request to Stripe, you can pass in extra metadata. So this could be a user ID um, that you capture as well, or something that can make sure you can identify this user, like a, a hash of their email address, for example, could be a good option. But that's something you need to think about when you're structuring and setting up your extension. If you've got any questions, do feel free to drop a comment on this video and let me know. Um, and I'll try and help you so you can find the best way to add this into your extension as well. So finally, we're going to have a look at how you can protect your code. Now, this is a, a tricky area. There's no perfect way of doing this because previously people would have to always pay for extension. If you had a paid extension, for example, this means that your, your source code can be viewed um, without someone previously having to pay for it. So again, this isn't a perfect option, but the best thing I would suggest to do is look into encoding your code a little bit. Now, the best tool that I would suggest for this is um, called Obsfication. Um, I've added a link to the best option for this in the description. So this is the Obsfication tool I was talking about just then. So all you have to do is get your, um, your extension code, so your main JavaScript files, not your manifest file, and then paste it into here. Um, and it gives you an example code um, to begin with, and you just need to click Obsfication. And there's options you can change down below, but the standard settings are probably the best ones to go with. Um, just make sure that you haven't got, um, where is it? That you haven't got debug protection switched on or disable console output, because that could interfere with the actual way the extension runs. Once you've got that ready, you just click um, Obsfication and then here's the code ready to be used. So just paste this into your files, but always be sure to keep a backup of your original code um, as well. Um, this is an easy way to sort of get started um, with protecting your code. And as I mentioned, there's not a perfect way around this, this is probably the best option. And as always, if you've got any other questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And it'd be interesting to see how many people this is likely to affect as well. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.